pick one word to describe Warfighter's gameplay, I think it would be cinematic. It does a great job of creating that soldier-level war experience, I think, at least in a war game, obviously. Well, there's a combination of 36 mission objective choices. There's quite a few player and equipment choices to choose from and a diverse range of enemies to fight against. This mission that we're playing is pretty straightforward, but it still gets pretty tense, as you'll see. Um, but I think in the end it comes out all right, and it definitely creates a memorable story that you can tell, and that's a great sign of a great game. Let's watch. Okay, so I've chosen my mission, my objective, and my squad. Now my mission is house to house, and it dictates how many points I can spend on my squad. It gives me 35. It tells me where to place the timer, how many turns I have to complete the mission, nine in this case, and what location to place the objective at. <clears throat> at this case, um, that's location number four. Now for my objective, I've chosen a supply dump. Now this is a structure, and I can only attack it with explosion weapons, um, but due to its size, it's plus three in size, so due to its size, my dice rolls to hit it are plus three because it's such a big target. It's got cover too, and I need to do six hits to destroy it. And hostiles screen this, so if my hostiles aren't killed or suppressed there, I have to attack them first. <clears throat> now for my squad, I've chosen Kaczynski as my player soldier because he's a good, not too high cost at nine. He comes with an experience point, and he's got a health of six, which is pretty good. What's well, also your hand size, so that matters. He has an M1 rifle three Mark II grenades, a satchel charge, a first aid kit, and a canteen. We'll explain what those do when we use them. My non-player soldiers, I have Scanlan, and I took him because he's got the M1918 machine gun, which I can use to suppress hostiles. He also comes with an XP, and he has an entrenching tool. I've taken a second non-player soldier, Allen. He has an M1 carbine and two Mark II grenades. And then I had enough points left over to... Um, had one point left over actually and I use that to take Taylor I liked his name he's only one point and he's got decent ranged attacks for zero and one especially at zero he's six or seven to attack but he does have the panic skill which means if another squad soldier is downed or another soldier in my squad is downed uh, he suffers a suppress because he panics now I've drawn my starting hand of six cards and one of the first things to note, mention is when you draw a card, if you draw a location marker, um, you immediately discard that and draw a location. So I've drawn a road, which is good because it is not a nature location. And the house to house mission clearly states that I move the timer counter forward one, I lose a turn each time I play a nature card. So I'm going to try to avoid nature cards. Now we go ahead and go into the soldier turn of the round. This turn is where I would attack. I could spend actions to attack, to move, to discard and draw, to remove a suppress, to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, to reload if I run out of ammo. I'll show you how that happens as it comes up because it always comes up. Um, and some actions you can do for free. Um, I can play an action card for free unless it says otherwise. Um, and you can play location cards. Some are free to play and this road, in fact, is a free to play location card. So I'm going to play that. It um, tells me how many experience points were the hostiles to put out based on my squad resource cost, which was 35. So it says here between 30 and 49 points, I want two XP worth of hostiles. So I'm going to draw from the hostile deck until I equal or exceed two XP worth of hostiles. And our first hostile is actually a machine gun team. They come in at three XP. So we don't have to draw anymore. All right, and when we draw a hostile, every time we draw a token here to see who they target. And they're gonna target soldier number three, who is Alan. That is my non-player soldier, my other grenade guy. So they're not gonna attack until the hostile phase, so that's good. They do add to the entrance cost of this location. The entrance cost is zero but they add plus two or plus one depending on how many of their reticles are suppressed or killed they have two reticles so essentially i have to do two kills to this um, hostile to eliminate them or two suppression to keep them from attacking me now i can <clears throat> act and i think i am 
But what I think I'm going to do is play an action card. This action card is go, go, go. It's a support card. It has a support cost of one, so I have to discard another action card to play it. So I'm going to discard walk it off. I may regret that later. So I'm going to play go, 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 and this lets each non-player and squad soldier can perform a move action without spending an action. And I can pay a cost of three experience points to retain it at the end of the soldier turn if I wish. Now, I'm going to go ahead and have Scanlan move in a location with the machine gunners. He's soldier number two. Now that's a plus two to the location entrance cost. He has a move of one, so I could discard a card to move him. And I am going to go ahead and discard a card. And the card I'm discarding is advance. Now this lets me, um, when my player soldier moves, I can add three to his movement value. Um, or I could pay an XP. I could upgun it with an XP to apply that to any soldier. But in this case, it's a wash because it's Scanlan. So I'm just paying the cost with it to move him to location two. Now that doesn't cost an action because of the go, go, go card. And I'm going to go ahead and have Taylor go. No, I'm just going to have Scanlan go because I've only got two cards left. I'm going to go ahead and have... <clears throat> At this point, I want Scanlan to attack that machine gun team. Now, he's carrying the M1918, which has a semi... It can fire in a semi-automatic or full automatic, but it's a machine gun, and if I deploy the bipod on it, then it can attack for... Um, it can do spray, which lets me actually hit multiple reticles on the target. Only explosions and spray weapons can do that. No matter how many shots you fire, you're usually only targeting one of the reticles of the target, one of the guys. So I'm going to spin an action to deploy my bipod. So I'm going to use a spray attack. Now for the spray attack, I still just roll one die to get past cover. And then I'm going to roll three dice to hit. So he needs... Their cover is four. The machine gun has a penetration of one. And it'll hit on a seven or better. So I'm going to go ahead and play this combined fire card. This lets me add one to ranged attack rolls for soldiers this turn. I can upgun that to add two. I don't like the machine gun team, so I am actually going to go ahead and spend the XP to upgun that. If it works out, I'm going to get XP back from it. So I'm going to go ahead and make my attack. I roll a hit. That's five, so I get past their cover. And this is a spray weapon, so they're both going to be suppressed because I got past the cover and I can target up to three, which I do. And then I'm going to add two to each die roll. I have a five, a four, and a two. So that five becomes a seven, which will kill one member of the machine gun team. And then I'm going to suppress the other because I got past the cover with the spray attack. All right, so that card is no longer in place. Neither is the go, go, go. But they are suppressed, and they don't affect the entrance cost anymore. So my other soldiers can move in there for a cost of zero. So I'm going to go ahead and move Allen in. That's player soldier number three. Or non-player soldier number three. And he's got one action left. He does have the... M1 carbine, so he is going to use his other action to attack. And that combined fire card actually is still in play. It's this turn all soldiers add to their attack rolls. So he is going to make his attack against the machine gun team. He's going to be plus one, so he'll hit on a six is the target number. Let me address something else real quick. I rolled a two on that attack with my machine gun. That is the reload value for the machine gun. So that means that he's out of ammo. And he's going to have to spend an action to reload before he can fire that weapon again. I saw that when it happened and made a mental note of it. And then got excited and moved on. So now I'm going to make my attack for Alan. They still have the cover value of 4, which is relatively high. I got past the 4. <clears throat> but I did not succeed in hitting the target. Plus 1. Or plus 2 rather gives me a 4. So that will not succeed. That's alright. I'm not going to get hung up on them being there. I'm going to pay an action 
to move Taylor. And I'm down to one card. And that makes me a little nervous. So I'm going to play an action for Kaczynski to draw five more cards. Hopefully I'll get something defensive if I need it. Or maybe a snapshot card. Oh, scrounge. I like scrounge. <clears throat> and I'm not going to go over each card um, until I play the card. That's when we'll discuss what it does. So, Kaczynski is in the main location still. So, he's got his rifle. He needs eight to hit at range one. I can try to take out that machine gun team. Or I can move him forward at this point. And what I think I'm going to do is try to take out the machine gun team. I think since I've got that combined fire in play that I'm going to go ahead and take the shot at this point. I will uh, <clears throat> need a 4 to get past their cover and an 8 to hit them with the M1 at this distance. However, I'm plus two, so I, I like those chances. And again, it's in effect. I've played the XP for it. I got past their cover, but I got a one to hit, which is a miss. In addition, the reload number for the M1 is two. So if I roll a two or less, it's out of ammo. These guys probably should have loaded their guns better before they took off. All right, so I'm out of actions. And I don't have any cards, I don't think, that I want to play at this point. However, that might change in a hostile turn. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that because <coughs> it goes away at the end of the turn. And now we're going to enter the hostile phase. And during the hostile phase, <coughs> the first thing that you do is draw for reinforcements or check for reinforcements. If you have a soldier in a location and it has a reinforced value, you check for enforcements, reinforcements. Or some cards, like the road in this case, say always draw for reinforcements. So even once my soldiers have moved on from that location, I'm going to draw for reinforcements for that location. So this card has a reinforced value of 1 and 5 through 9. So I'm going to draw this next hostile card if its value is 1, or if, if it's between 5 and 9, I'm going to add them. But if it's a 2, 3, or 4, or a 0, they're not going to get added to the location, and I don't have to deal with any more hostiles. All right, this card is Rifleman. They are a one, so they will get added. And they are going to target soldier number three, who is Allen. <coughs> now, after I draw for reinforcements, the hostiles will attack. In this case, the machine gun team cannot attack, but the Rifleman can. They're targeting Allen. Allen has a cover value of two. There are still three reticles on this card, so they're going to roll. There's a column here, two columns, one if they have three reticles and one if they have two or one reticles. And it says what their attack range is and what values they need to hit. With three of them, they need a six or better to do one wound to Allen if they get past his cover. They could just suppress him, just like me attacking them. So they got a five, which will suppress Allen, but the four does not wound him. Now I do have a take cover card that will let me cancel that attack, but it would cost me one XP to do so. At this point, I think I'm just going to put the suppression on Alan because he can get rid of that with an action, and he gets two actions. All right, so the next thing to do would be if any of my hostiles weren't in range, then they would move toward their targeted, so in this case, Alan for the rifleman. However, they're both in range, so they're not going to move. The next thing I do is remove one suppression from each card that has a suppression on it. So I'm going to remove that one from the hostiles. Now you see the suppression doesn't get removed till the end of the turn. So by suppressing those hostiles, you keep them from attacking for that turn. Now if I had to put two suppression on there, then they'd still have the one. But we have the one guy already killed. And then we advance the timer. And it's now the soldier turn. Alright, so we're going to keep playing this out and see how it goes. So at the top of turn six, I have all my actions available to me and some choices to make. 
Well, the first choice is a no-brainer. Scanlan needs to reload his weapon. I think I'm going to go for the objective this turn. So I am going to activate the objective. When I do, I have to draw for hostiles, and it's got 4 XP worth of hostiles. I'm going to shift everything over here a little bit. These are all at that location, or at this location. And then 4 value for hostiles. I draw a sniper team. They add to the entrance cost, and they are screened by hostiles with a value of 0 or 1. That's 3, so one more, hopefully. Stragglers, yes, and they go to the rearmost location. So the stragglers are on the road, but the stragglers come with an event. First, let's assign the sniper team's target. Their target is Kaczynski, of course. And the straggler's target is Alan. Now we draw and resolve this event for the stragglers. That event is take five. I can move the f I can move the counters one space forward to reload all weapons and discard and draw hands to full. Well, unfortunately, I already spent the action to reload for Scanlan. However, I am going to discard and draw all but one. I'm going to keep one card, and you'll see why here in a minute, and draw five. Ooh, nice. And I have to remember for that event to advance the timer, one. So here's my plan. My plan is to suppress these snipers, get in here, and blow up the supply dump. Seems like a pretty straightforward plan. It's got six hits. So the first thing I'm going to do is have Scanlan attack the snipers. Now I have a card here called Prepared Fire. And it says I can play when you or any soldier, if I upgun it, declare an attack, treat my defeat cover roll as being a six. So I'm going to declare an attack with Scanlan, spend his one XP he has remaining, to treat the defeat cover roll as six and make a spray attack against these snipers. I roll three dice for the spray attack. I get a nine and a three and two threes. So I don't have to reload. I defeat the cover so I press them both, suppress them both, but one of them is actually killed. So now they are no longer screening the objective. Now the objective has an entrance cost of two. Taylor has a, or Kaczynski has a move value of one. I'm sorry, it has an entrance cost of three. I have to discard two cards to move Kaczynski, so I will. I'm going to discard an extra magazine and a reload card. I'm not going to need those, hopefully. Use an action to move him, and then he's going to use his satchel charge. He's going to make an attack, and the satchel charge says expended, so it's expended to attack. Um, and I add five to attack and penetration rolls against vehicles and structures. Well, this is a structure. It's an explosion two, so I'm only going to do two wounds to it. And it has six. But I'm going to go ahead and make that attack with the satchel charge. And I'm plus five to both rolls. Uh, the uh, satchel charge needs an eight to do its damage. So against this structure, I need a three or better. So three plus three is six, and seven plus three is ten. So that is two hits on the supply dump. And then it's got four left. Now, let's see. The next step will be to move Alan into the location for one action. His movement is two, so I'm going to have to discard another card, and I will discard that otherwise really valuable. Actually, I'm going to discard the sniper support card to move Allen in. Now, one of the things that you can do on your soldier turn is, and it doesn't cost an action, is you can freely exchange equipment between soldiers. Allen has used both of his grenades. Kaczynski still has two left. So I'm going to give one of those grades to Kaczynski, and I'm going to toss it at the supply dump. Now our grenade is penetration one, um, so I'll get through the cover, 
and it's explosion four. So I could do up to four hits against the supply dump. Uh, the hit value needed is seven. So look at that. Eight, eight, and ten is three more hits on the supply dump. And then I get to roll one more die. And I get a five. So that's one more turn. We have to hunker down here and get past these hostiles or hold out against these hostiles to potentially destroy the supply dump. Oh, it's a cliffhanger. I love it. So we're now going to enter the hostile phase. These troublesome stragglers will move on when it comes time to move. These riflemen are targeting Taylor, so they'll attack Taylor. They need a six to hit him. Oh wait, I still have actions from my other soldiers. Taylor has an action. And so while he's here, he's going to attack the riflemen that are in his location. They're range zero. He only has one wound left, so he needs a seven to hit. He got a seven to hit, and he got through their cover of one. So that puts one kill on those stragglers. And Scanlan still has an action left. And he is going to make a spray attack against that truck. Hopefully I can at least suppress it. Um, but I can do up to three suppression against it. And that will keep it from reinforcing. It gets passed. So <clears throat> its cover of three is surpassed by that six. So it's going to be three suppression except one of them will be a kill. But that one means I am unloaded again. I'm out of ammo. So now all my soldiers have used their actions. And now we enter the hostile turn and we're going to do our reinforcements. So for the road, we draw a value of two so we don't reinforce the road. For the lane, we draw a value of one so we will re we'll reinforce the lane with recruits and these recruits will screen other non-recruit hostiles. They're going to target Allen and then we don't reinforce for the truck because it is suppressed. All the reticles are suppressed. And then the sniper team, or rather the location here, the supply dump, only a zero or a one. And it's a three. It's an officer. So we don't reinforce the supply dump. Now we're going to make our attacks. Those riflemen here will target Allen. No, these riflemen, I'm sorry, will target Taylor. They do not, oh, they do, in fact, get past his cover value and do a wound. So Taylor is killed in action. He is down. So we're going to get rid of that and draw a new target for them. And the new target will be Kaczynski the next turn. I don't know if they get experience points for that. They have to keep track of that. These riflemen will target Allen. There is only one left, so he needs an eight to do one wound. He doesn't get past his cover, and he doesn't roll an 8, so Alan is safe. These recruits will target Alan. They do get past his cover, and they do one wound. So Alan takes a wound. He has two left, or one left. The stragglers have a range of zero, so they won't attack. They're going to move. The truck does nothing, and these stragglers move one closer to Allen, so they are now in the lane. And the ambushers will make their attack against Scanlan. There are two of them, so they need a seven or better to do one wound. They got through his cover, but they didn't do a wound, so he could be suppressed. However, I have that foxhole counter here, 
and I can discard that to cancel um, to do suffer no effect from that attack and that's what I'm going to do that's why I put it there I think that's all the hostiles except these stragglers I can't remember if they attacked Kaczynski or not so I'm going to make an attack against him they defeat his cover oh no I'm sorry they're going to move that's what's going to happen with them. I might have to review the tape to see if they already moved this turn. I don't think they did, though. So they're going to move, and now they're going to be screening this supply dump. Which is a major annoyance. That's going to keep me from attacking that supply dump. I remove suppression counters at the end of the turn, and I advance the turn counter. All right, so now we're back in the soldier turn. I'm down one soldier. Now I need to do something about these guys here. There's only one structural wound left on the supply dump. Got to take out the snipers. <clears throat> and I've got to take out those stragglers. So I'm going to take out the stragglers or try to. I'm going to spend an action for Kaczynski to discard and draw. And I'm going to draw four cards. I'm going to keep the two that I have. One is a location marker. I would draw a new location, but I don't need to. And I'm going to discard this card anyway. So I'm just not going to mix up the cards. Because I'm going to play this mortar support card. I'm going to discard four action cards to do so. And I'm going to make a penetration to explosion six attack against the stragglers. So penetration, well one gets past their cover so that's an explosion. Two were killed with a zero and a nine because I need a seven to hit and I still got two more dice to roll or three more dice to roll. Four of them are killed and one of them is suppressed. That is the right thing at the right time. That worked out great. Now, I still have the snipers screening this location. So I'm going to have Alan attack those snipers with his carbine. That does not work out. All right, so Alan has two actions left, or one action left, and so does Kaczynski. But I still have Scanlan here, and that's why I should have attacked those snipers with. Scanlan will spend one action to reload his gun. This is his last belt, too, to make an attack against the sniper team. A spray attack. They're at range one, so he needs eights to hit. We penetrated the cover. We did not get any kills, though. However, that's a suppression, which means they no longer screen the target. And so now I'm going to use my last hand grenade to make an attack on the supply dump. Explosion 4 attack. Cover 2, so I'll automatically get past. Hopefully, I'm going to roll 3 dice, and then another one. I automatically get past its cover of 2, because the grenade is penetration 1. I get 4 dice. I make my roll. I just need a 7. The 3 gets past, of course. And that 10 will do the 1 hit that I needed. Now, according to the rolls, the instant I complete the objective, I win. So the satchel charge wasn't the right tool for that objective. Grenades would have sufficed, but that's okay. It's too cool a piece of equipment not to take along. I always remember the guys in the old war movies or the newsreels charging the bunker and tossing the satchel charge in there, taking out the machine gun inside so their buddies can get off the beach or move across the road. Now, I like the way it turned out having forgotten the plus three for the size of the objective because calling in the mortar support to take out those stragglers who showed up created a better story in my opinion 
and that's something that Warfighter really excels at. Now in our next episode we're going to create another story. This time we're going to be cut off and alone. We're going to use the airborne expansion and we're going to make an airborne mission and those are special missions. We have to deal with landing zones. We're going to have to deal with behind enemy lines events on every turn. It's going to be like the longest day or an episode of Band of Brothers. It's really fun and it's really well done. Like always, I thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the uh, comment section down below. And we'll see you next time.